broadcasting all the way from the Prayer Cathedral Action Chapel International. And we have as our visionary Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, who is also the Apostle of Strategic Prayer and the visionary of all NDW ministries. I am Bishop Kofi Okwenji, and I'm glad to have you on board uh, connecting with us that we may change the dashboard of your testimonies. Somebody say, Father, in the name of Jesus. We have come before the throne room of God to engage the heavenlies, to favor our cause right here on planet Earth, right here in our homes, right here in our nation, right here in our community. By prayer, we change the signature of the enemy that has endorsed our destruction, that has endorsed the frustration of our advancement as we pray we declare there shall be a turnaround the hand of the lord will favor us we declare in the name of jesus whatever is stronger than we can fight we engage the hand of elohim we declare heaven will answer right now let the hand of the lord be in favor of our expectation let the hand of the lord champion the cause of the events of our life. We change every pattern of situations and stories that have become an affliction and a pain to our very life as we pray right now. May heaven favor us because we have prayed. May heaven answer us because we have prayed. May heaven give us clues to the life that we expect to live because heaven will answer us and heaven will work on our behalf even in the name of Jesus. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. He says, call to me and I will answer you. I want you to understand that prayer involves a call. Prayer involves a petition. Prayer involves a benediction. Prayer involves an invitation of the power of God and heaven's attention over our crisis. As you join us to pray, what you are doing is that you are drawing heaven's attention even to your condition wherever you are in the globe. And it is my prayer that every aspect of Jeremiah 33 would work out for you. You will have a testimony of this particular scripture. It is a powerful scripture and I encourage you to desire to have every reward that is captured in this particular scripture. He says, call to me and I will answer you. Number one, prayer involves a call. Number two, prayer gives us answers. He says, call to me and I will answer you. And then he says that, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. You want to know some great things. You want to know some mighty things. You have to call on God. You have to engage in prayer. We are going 21 days non-stop. And every day you want to pray. And every watch you want to pray. In this particular Issachar prayer time, we have the daytime watches, which is at 6 a.m., which is at 9 a.m., which is at 12 noon. Then there is a 3 p.m. and then a 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. and 12 midnight. And we bring closure to the prayer watches. You want to decide which of the watches will favor you and do you good. And as you do this, I pray and I ask God to show you a divine turnaround and a divine release for a testimony. Well, this time we want to be talking, praying and talking about possessing the gate. Possessing the gate. Somebody say possessing the gate. Possessing the gate. What does it mean to possess a gate? When God gave authority to Adam, See that authority to Adam in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, God gave him parameters. He says that subdue the territory in which I have blessed you and multiply and increase and exert your influence over the birds of the air and the fishes of the sea and the creeping animals of the earth. What did God do? God gave him 
territorial authority and every territory is guarded by a gate wherever you are there is a gate there is a gate to your city there is a gate to your business there is a gate to your marriage there is a gate to your destiny but what the enemy does is that if he can possess the gate he has control over the territory but whatever territory that God has given you advantage of by prayer we want to preserve it by prayer we want to protect it by prayer we want to defend the gate and we declare that the enemy in the gate of yours that gives you authority of control governance and rulership but the enemy has hijacked the gate the enemy has positioned himself in the gate right now we arrest the enemy say I arrest the hand of the enemy I arrest in the agency of the enemy that are positioning itself at my country's gate, at my city's gate, at my domestic gate, at my business gate, at my marital gate, any entity, any power that have been deployed by the underworld, by the forces of darkness to control my territory by virtue of the gate. Right now, I contend with them by the power of prayer in the name of Jesus, we command them to release in a gate that they have cut it, in a gate they have cut it, in my life, in my children's life, in my spouse's life, in my church, in the entity, disembodied spirit that have captured the gate to my control and my governance. We command them right now, let them be bound, let them be arrested. We declare right now, let the power by which they are taking over, let them lose the power. Say, I take over every gate in the spirit and in the physical concerning my community, any entity that have exalted itself by an altar, by an evil foundation, and they are controlling the entities of the underworld. They have gathered the entities of the underworld to limit us in our progress, in our fruitfulness, in our elevation, whatever control they have exerted, we command them right now, let them lose it. They can lose the, the power to the control of the gate. Listen to me, to every strong institution, there is a security man that has been positioned at the gate. What is the security man there for? He's there in the interest of the organization that employed. Listen, the earth belongs to the Lord. And so God has positioned us for his interest. That is why we have been created for his pleasure. We are supposed to control the gate of any domain and territory that he has positioned us by virtue of our country, by virtue of our community. So we've got to rise up and declare we are taking over. I can see somebody rising up to secure the gate of your marriage. There is a third party interest over your marriage, but you want to rise up. There is an influence over your family. Family. Your children are going wayward. Your children are being taken over. Their mind, their desires, their passions. But you as a father, the priest of the house, you have to rise up and declare control over your children by controlling the gate. Say in the name of Jesus, I exert my spiritual authority through the powers of Elohim from the heavenly realm and I declare in the position of take over by the enemy over my children, over my marriage, over my business, over my investment, over my nation, I declare right now, let them dispossess it, let them dispossess it, let them disown it, let them lose control, whatever is in their hand, we command them to release it, let them relinquish one now, let them relinquish it right now, let them lose it right now, let their grave be weakened, let their grave be loose. We declare right now by the finger of God, we exert power and pressure against them, any advantage, any control, whatever they carry that gives them ownership over the gate of our nation. We command them, lose it. I want us to look at a few scriptures. 
Let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 to 6. David was a king sitting in his palace, but he had a young son called Absalom. And the Bible says, Absalom was a handsome young man with a lot of bouncy and curly hair that was weighed every year to the glory and the praise of his handsomeness. And this young man did something, and I want us to look at it from the word of the Lord. Second Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 to 6, and then we'll draw our prayer points, and then we'll declare, make declarations, and then take advantage of our gift. He says, after this, it happened that Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Now you must understand that these protocols are meant and reserved for David. But you see, Absalom, the Bible says that after these things, which means that some things have happened and he have decided also to have the same privileges like his father. So after he has seen his father and joined the privileges, he decided that, look, I have to take over my father's gate. And listen to me, one of the first things that he did was to provide for him the protocols of an entourage. The Bible says that he provided for himself horses and chariots to go ahead of him at the time he was riding to the palace or riding out of the palace. You see, the devil is interested in what you have. And after you have prospered, after you have gained control, after you have gained favor and elevation, the enemy is also looking for that which you have acquired and that which you have gained. And so the enemy was also positioning himself at the gate to compete with you, but by prayer, any unhealthy competition at your gate, anyone that has become interested in that which is your possession, that which is your right, that which is your inheritance, they have decided to Double you from the place of your governance, from your palace, in your home. We pray and we declare the name of Jesus. Let them lose whatever they have acquired to compete with you. Whatever they have armed themselves to contend with you. Let them lose it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the Absalonian spirit that are positioning itself at my palace gate to contend with me, to compete with me, to dispose possess me and to displace me, I declare right now, I possess my gift by securing myself spiritually and physically at my gate. I will not be displaced. I will not be unseated. I declare right now, my seat is secured. My authority is secured. My position is secured. My rights are secured. And they have salon that have decided to position himself right in my privileges, let them lose out. You see, he says that, and he provided for himself chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. Now Absalom will rise early and stand beside the way to the gate. Did you see how Absalom programs himself. The Bible says that he rises up early. Any power of darkness that have decided to take over your gate and have an advantage in a calendar to rise up ahead of you. They have an, a, an advantage in a prediction. They have an advantage in the day and the night, in the dark hours of the time, in a blind time that you do not see, but the enemy has set an agenda ahead of you, uh, to go ahead of you, and to make sure that before you arrive, they have taken occupancy. I command them right now, let the time not favor them. Let the their shadow all of a sudden be cancelled in the name of Jesus. Whatever they have programmed in the time of the enemy uh, to work against you, let the blood of Jesus let it overrule it, let it overwrite it. In the year 2022, you will not lose out on any strategic time that will favor your
your call, that will favor your business, that will favor your nation, that will favor your marriage, that will favor your investment. Whatever timetable you have set for yourself, but the enemy has gone ahead of you in time and in space to position himself by an evil agenda to ensure that before you arrive, they have already arrived. We declare right now, may the hand of the law derail them. May the hand of the law deaccelerate them. May the hand of the law slow them down. Say in the name of Jesus, God will favor us. Now Absalom will rise early, stand beside the way to the gate. So it was when anyone who had a lawsuit came to the king for a decision that Absalom would call to him and say, what city are you from? And he would say, your servant is from such and such a tribe of Israel. Then Absalom would say to him, look, your case is good and right, but there is no deputy of the king to hear you. Moreover, Absalom would say, all that I were made a judge in the land and I will give justice to everyone. Moreover, Absalom will say, I would make myself a judge and everyone who has any suit will come to me and I'll give him justice. And so it was, whenever anyone came near to bow down to him, that he would put out his hand and take him and kiss him. In this manner, Absalom, the Bible says that he acted poets, all Israel who came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the people. One of the strategies of the enemy to take over your gate is to make sure anyone that is diligent, anyone that is astute, anyone that is reliable, close to you, what the enemy does is to steal their heart. When they steal the heart of the people who watch at the gate for you, listen, you are on the way to be toppled. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the personality, in the individual, that by an evil kisses, that by an evil act, by an evil countenance, by a deceptive tongue, by a seducing character, have taken over my gate, the gate of my destiny, and have decided to steal the heart of all who are loyal to me. I declare right now, as I pray, whatever loyalty they have won through deception, through seduction, through cases, through pleasantries, through fake parcels, I declare right now, let that be corrupted all of a sudden. Let their strategy, let the agenda, let it backfire. Say backfire, say backfire, say we topple every move that they have put together to seduce, to win the heart of men and women that are loyal to us, to our organization, to our family, to our churches, to our nation, to our government, any partnership that is a deceptive one to lure men and women to leave their loyal position in our favor, we declare right now, let them be cut off. If you don't deal with this men and these women who come close to your gate, and to use sweet and lofty words to entice those who come to you, those who were coming to the king, the Bible says that Absalom will give them kisses. Absalom will say, if I were made a judge, he was not yet a judge, but he had an evil desire. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the personality, in the human entity, in the nation and country that have set eyes on you, that have set eyes on your family, that have set eyes on your customers, that have set eyes on your business, that have set eyes on your favorite market where you do good business and they have decided that they will take away without your knowledge, 
they will take away by seduction, they will take away by deception. Whatever belongs to you, I pray we expose their scheme and their enterprise. It will not work. We block them by this 21 days of prayer. We possess our gear. Whatever they are positioning themselves, we reposition them. We displace them. We kick them out by prayer. We shift them. We displace them. We command them to be taking off their position in the name of Jesus. Well, we give thanks to Elohim for the wonderful time that we have spent with you. And it is our prayer that the hand of the Lord will continue to give you the power and authority to recover all your lost grounds. Every gate that was a security for you, but an enemy has positioned himself at that gate to disadvantage you, to disallow you, and to ensure that you do not have access. It is my prayer that God will give you back in the lost possession, in the lost territory, in the gate that you have lost. May the Lord give it back to you. I declare over your life, you will possess your possession, you will possess your business. Business. You possess your market. You possess your inheritance. You will get back your money. Whatever is slipping out of your hand, as we take control over the gate, by prayer you are taking it back. I declare you will have it back. I declare in the everlasting gate that have been there as ancient gate, let it be lifted up. Let every ancient gate be lifted up that the king of glory who ensures our testimony would allow us to advance. I declare access. I declare entry. I declare you are advancing into your courtyard of your favor in the gate of limitation. Let it be taken out of the way. It is a wonderful time we've had with you, and it is my prayer that as you keep joining us on this Issachar 21 days of prayer, God will continue to show you his message and show you his kindness. Listen to me, God will favor you. No matter what your condition has been, prayer can turn your situation around. And remember, he says when we call unto him, he will answer us. God has an answer for you. Keep connected. Keep the link. This is where we part company. But before we leave, we want to give you the opportunity to connect to the man who is the door. He says, I am the door. I am the entryway. I am the way. His name is Jesus. If you want access, connect to Jesus. I want you to make this prayer and partner with God. Get your life hooked on him. Make him your Lord and your personal Savior. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, name of I, surrender Jesus. I surrender my life. I surrender my strength. I surrender my and I surrender my will, surrender my will. Even, to even to Elohim. Now, O oh Lord, now, oh Lord. Forgive, me forgive me my sins. Reconcile me, Reconcile me. by the shed blood. the shed blood. Give me a new identity, a new identity. by giving me the Holy Spirit. Forgive me, O oh God, for there is no name under the heavens by which a man can be saved except the name of Jesus Christ. As I confess my sins, I know my name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Behold, all things are past, and I'm a new creation. I have a new identity. I have a new personality. In Jesus' name, amen. You want to connect? To all the watches that will be coming to you. And you want to share the link. God bless you for joining us for this segment of prayer. Expect a miracle. 2022 will be good for you. Amen. Amen.